One of the most controversial issues of our time. Presidential candidates are talking about it. States are blaming the federal government for failing to deal with it. Washington seems incapable of fixing our broken system. Of course, we're talking about immigration. And today on the Bronx Journal, we have Westchester County Attorney Robin Bicao to help us decipher this very complex issue. Welcome to the program. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. Is there any hope for the 11 million undocumented immigrants in this country, seeing that Washington is all tied up and incapable of solving the problem? People ask me all the time, will there be immigration reform? And I tell them, that's the wrong question. The question is, when will we have immigration reform? So yes, I do think there is hope. Mm -hmm. But how? I mean, do you see it happening in the near future? Do you see President Obama succeeding in his promise to deliver some kind of reform? Uh, almost every candidate on the Republican side running against Obama right now has come out in the debates against any kind of immigration reform plan. Some of them have even said, even after we secure the border, we're still not going to go for the uh, legalization of the 11 million who are here. How do you deal with that? I think it's a moving target. I think depending on exactly what's going on in government, uh, we have some hope of possibly having some reform next year or leaving it for 2013. Mm -hmm. I think that President Obama is a highly intelligent and, and very astute politician and he has all of the numbers figured out in his own head and he knows he needs a certain number of votes both in the House and the Senate and until he has those votes with a lot of horse trading that he's not going to say anything about immigration reform mm -hmm. and then if it gets close enough to the election where he feels like he's going to lose the entire Hispanic community and immigrant naturalized community then there are administrative things that he can do within the executive branch uh, to kind of soften the blow until 2013. There is a lot of resentment out there and especially in the Hispanic community because they are holding him to this promise that he made that he was going to bring this before Congress and he was going to get it passed and of course you know he hasn't had and lately he has not had the House of Representatives to be able to do this but people recall that there was a period when he passed health care reform mm -hmm. that there was a period when he did have a majority in Congress and he could have gone for immigration reform mm -hmm. and they won't forget that so the question is do we still vote for the guy who promised to do something and didn't come, come up with it? Or do we vote for the people who are promising not to help us at all? Because that's what the Republicans are doing. It's even worse, no? Yes, I think it's, I think it's gonna be very hard. Um, but I think as people are watching the news and they see what the alternative is to President Obama, and if they just understand the fact that there have been one roadblock after another, that Republicans are dead set on making sure that he doesn't get reelected, that they have to understand that it's not just a matter of him not wanting to pass immigration reform, but that he just hasn't had the chance to even um, bring it to the table. But having said that, there are some things that he could have done that haven't been done, that are within his discretion. And he did something recently. I'm talking about deportations. Right. Because he had the record. He even beat President Bush in the number of deportations. Yes, he, he broke did. the record. He That's deported right. more people than anyone else. I think that was because he was trying to appease the people on the right. He, in the beginning of his administration, he wanted to say, look, I'm going to secure the border. I'm going to deport people. But then you got to come to me and, and come up with some kind of agreement. They let him do that. And then they backed down and they didn't come up with an agreement. So what well, what does he do now? He comes up with a plan where supposedly he's easing up on the deportations. Tell me about that. Right. Well, I mean, we got we just got yet another more clear uh, um, statement about what they are doing and what they're not doing. And according to the statement, people that have certain types of applications denied are going to be on the top of the list together with criminal aliens. And then other people, for example, up to now when somebody's immigrant petition was denied just because maybe an employer couldn't show an ability to pay or some other issues like that, they were being placed in removal proceedings. Now they're not going to do that anymore. They're going to focus on very uh, a very finite type of, of cases where they will bring people into removal and criminal aliens, uh, fraud issues, uh, those are going to be where they focus. And anything that's unrelated to fraud, where it's really bad luck, or they, you know, you've been caught, that's where, in theory, they're going to be easing up on, um, on 
placing people in removal proceedings. That would affect, I imagine, a lot of the young people who were hoping for the DREAM Act and didn't get it, uh, which was this law that would have allowed the, at least the young people who came here very young to, to get citizenship, uh, who came as children, didn't even decide to come on their own. They were brought here by their parents. Uh, but is there any hope, at least for them, under this new uh, provision uh, that they are not going to be deported? No. There's no because, guarantee. No. If they have a criminal record, they're still gone. Yes, if, they're, if, there's, if they have a criminal record, they're going to be placed in removal proceedings. Um, although it could be that uh, smaller crimes won't, but I think it's going to take a while for, the, for ICE to lay off on starting uh, deportation proceedings against those type of people. What I, I try to understand, I explain this to my friends and to my readers when I write my column, and what I, what I try to explain is that they've had this thing called collateral damage, for, mm -hmm. where, where for years they go looking for one criminal in one building, but That's they right. knock on 10 doors, right. and anybody who opens and doesn't have papers gets uh, arrested right. and ends up being deported. So a lot of innocent people, not entirely innocent, because again, they're undocumented, mm -hmm. but this is is not the person they came looking for. They came looking for one, maybe they arrested 10, right. and the other nine get deported. Is that what's going to stop now? Yes, I think that's what's going to stop now. Although I think you still have an overzealous ICE department that um, is going to have to think about what they are going to be doing because they've all been very busy, very happy, and very busy uh, just rounding people up from different communities who don't have any kind of criminal record, whose only crime is to be in this country without proper documentation. So tell me about your clients. What are the issues that they are coming up uh, to you nowadays? Up in Westchester County is where your practice is. Right. So when they come to you nowadays, who are they? Are they undocumented immigrants? Where are they coming from? What part of the world are, are the immigrants that are coming to see you? And what kind of problems are you facing nowadays? Right. Well, uh, traditionally we had been a, a very uh, large employment-based uh, law firm. We did a lot of employment-based immigration, family immigration. But I would say in the last year it has turned more into a removal uh, cases th much more than we had in the past. There are many more people that have been placed in removal, so it's a matter of maneuvering the immigration court system to either uh, find creatively uh, forms of relief or to postpone the inevitable uh, or to try to protect the client so they don't end up having to leave the country. And what we have found, which is something that's really good, is that we have started to get cooperation from judges and from trial attorneys representing the Department of Homeland Security who will administratively close cases where there is no fraud, where there is no crime, and yet for some reason the person can't apply for permanent resident at the time. So it's starting to trickle down into the court system. And so the people who are coming to you nowadays up in Westchester County, where are they from? What part of the world? Um, in, in my practice, I would say 75 to 80 percent are from South and Central America. And then there's a smattering of, you know, pretty much anywhere else. Are, are some of these people eligible for political asylum or any other recourse that they have that they could... Uh, any, any group in particular that can benefit nowadays from political asylum or any other roundabout way to get the green card? What we're finding is that women are able to uh, uh, legalize their status based on cases, uh, VAWA cases, Violence Against Women Act ca cases, and U visas, which is where they have been the victims of crime. Um, the hard part is to try to convince the person to come forward and to cooperate with the, with the legal system uh, to go after the perpetrator of the crime. And, and when they start understanding that they're going to get protections, they're going to get work, empl employment authorization, uh, social security numbers, and, and actually help from the government, then they're a little bit more willing to help and, and get this person in jail and hopefully out of the Ooh. country if they're real bad abusers. Ooh. What can people do? You say that it's, it's a question of when that right. we're going to have reform. What can undocumented immigrants do now to start getting ready for that process? Okay, well, I think there are some things they definitely can do. First of all, if they've had any kind of a contact with uh, the immigration department, they were caught coming in, they applied for something in the past that was kind of uh, just forgotten, even though it might have been uh, denied, they should get a Freedom of Information out. 
to get their file because that takes a year or longer to get. Because what they don't want to have happen is that we have immigration reform, they go to a lawyer and the lawyer says, okay, tell me about yourself. When you say get a freedom of information, now, now, what is that? What explain that? It means that? it's, it's, it's a, an application to Homeland Security requesting a copy of whatever record they have on the person. And that's what, they have so many of these outstanding that it takes a long time to get your record. It comes in CD form. Are they but still now, all backed up over there that very it takes up. a long time to get anything done? About a year or more to get that, depending to get your on file. The, depending on what you're applying for, it takes longer too, right? No, I'm just talking about freedom of information requests. Okay. Just for a copy of their files. Yeah. Because what they, what they have to do is they have to go through the file to make sure there's nothing they don't want to uh, copy for you, and then they put it on a CD and mail it. So that takes a good year. They want to pay their taxes. They want to get a tax ID number, and if they haven't paid their taxes, I would recommend they pay at least three years back, 2010, 9, and 8. They might have to pay even more in the long run, depending on what Congress How passes. How is that going to help them later? Because there, there's two things. One of them is good moral character. Whatever law they pass is going to require proving moral, good moral character. And good moral character is not only not having committed a crime, but having paid your taxes if you've worked. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. So there is a f an avenue. You can apply for a tax ID number and file your taxes. And people say, well, they've paid me in cash. Well, you just say, they paid me in cash. This is how much I made. And then you pay the tax based on what you did. Mm -hmm. They uh, get their birth certificates, marriage certificates, divorce, death certificates from their countries and get those translated and have them. So in other words, get your act together. Get your act together now. Don't start getting it together when it's because you're going to be behind the eight ball. Right. When they were planning on having immigration reform a few years ago, they were thinking about having an eight-year process, which is brutal, wow. before you would become a resident. Wow. I know. So yeah. if they're still in the same mindset over eight years, that means that from the time you start, if you're late even getting in, you're going to be way at the tip. Well, the, the way end. things are going, and when we finally come to some uh, comprehensive immigration reform, it's going to be amended so many times that they're going to make these people jump through hoops and so eight years may not be enough for, for some of the oh more conservative God. people You're in Congress. Right. So, you right. know, they do have to get ready. They have to get ready. And, and I also recommend that for whatever time they're in the country, that they get a binder and they separate it by years. Any paper that they have with their name, the date, and their address, if there is that. Proof that they've been here all these years, exactly. right? Uh, exactly. Receipts. Uh, receipts. Uh, from the uh, light bill or That's whatever. That's right. Phone company, yeah. That's right. Listen, all I that. appreciate you, the, all the information. It's been wonderful having you on the show. I hope you come back so we can keep Thank talking you. about this. Where do people get a hold of you? Uh, uh, our firm is called Bacallan Associates. We're in White Plains, New York. Okay, is there a number? 914-683-5300. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. And we'll